Hi, everyone, and welcome to the ninth annual She Rocks Awards. We're at the red carpet, our virtual red carpet, and we're with Cindy Blackman Santana. Hi, Cindy. Hi, how are you? I'm very good. Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is a, a, a great honor. I'm, I'm really happy. Tell me, um, I'm going to ask you a lot of things about your career, but, you know, of course, there's that iconic drum set behind you. I think everyone knows and loves your drumming work. I certainly am always floored. I'll never forget watching you in that Lenny Kravitz video. Just killing it with that hair going. <laughs> Such an image that's burned in my mind. So I'm a huge fan and I want to congratulate you. Why is it important to have an awards ceremony like the She Rocks Awards? Well, firstly, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, it's important to have this kind of award because, you know, we, we need to um, recognize and applaud people who are giving to the music from all walks of life. You know, not just the male sector, not just the Caucasian sector, not just the, you know, the liberal sex, sex sector, just from all walks of life. And I'm just pulling, you know, examples out, out, out of the air, but, you know, from, from all walks of life. And so, you know, it's wonderful that um, these great women are, 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 are being, you know, um, recognized for the, the music that they're creating, giving, you know, um, the vibrations that they're putting out. It's, I, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I know that you're a very spiritual person too on the research that I've done about you. So, <laughs> so vibration, interesting from someone who's a drummer, you know, is, do you think that's what drew you into that instrument in particular? I know you play multiple instruments, but is there something about being a drummer that is, let's say like, you know, since we're talking about a women's award show, a lot of people don't think of female drummers or, or that fem females should play the drums or, you know, what's your take on the instrument itself and what it brings to you? Uh, for me personally, um, it's all about the pulse and the vibration and the, and the moods that you can set and, you know, um, the energy, you know, that's a big one for me, the sounds of the drums and the fact that it's so very physical, you know, because you're involving your entire body, you know, you're using both limbs, you know, you're using both hands, using both, both feet, you know, your whole body is, is, is in this instrument completely um, as a requirement, you know, um, and for me, I like that. You know, uh, I, I, I love sports and I love being active, you know, so that aspect is also a draw for me. Um, but just rhythmically, you know, the, the universe is made up of frequency, pulse, rhythm, sound, you know, and so that's a major component in not only where we all live, but what we're all made of. So to me, it really uh, touches and hits the core of every single person, every single piece of creation, you know, in, in this realm, it, it, it really uh, uh, touches all of that because it resonates through all of that at some point, you know, and all the time. Did you always know that? Or is this something that you just, I mean, cause that is, it's, it, it's, it sounds pretty researched and deep, you know, to me. Uh, you know, <laughs> make a person. <laughs> but did you always know that, that that's what was happening? That was your connection? You know, I think that uh, as, as a young girl, I didn't know that, but I felt the primordial draw and the primordial magnetism of this instrument, not really being able to define what it was, you know, probably until adulthood or, you know, becoming... Um, more aware of myself and more aware of my surroundings and what we're made of and, and, and what all that uh, is in relation to relationship rather to me navigating in this realm, you know? Um, so I, I think I just felt that early on, but, you know, through different studies that I've done, meditations, focuses, you know, just life experience, actually getting on the instrument and playing them and seeing what, what, what they do, you know, that's all led me to, to think that. I, I had a friend, my best, one of my best friends when I was uh, 13 was a deaf mute. Mm. And 
his name was Doug. And yeah. Doug used to have such a great time coming in into my house and going to my basement where my drums were. Mm. And it was like the time that he could finally be free because I would play and he would dance and sing. Wow. And he was mute, so he couldn't talk. But it, so it was kind of like, you know, whatever he was able to get out, whatever sounds he was able to make to be able to express and to feel what it's like to express. And he was so happy, you know. Yeah. So when I was 13, I was like, wow, the drums are doing that to him. You know, so I didn't know how to express it, but I definitely saw it and felt it at that, you know, at the earlier ages. Well, the joy that it was bringing is like a, another incredible way to look at it because it certainly is a powerful instrument, you know, but I think that that's, that's beautiful. That's such a great story. <laughs> Thank Thanks for you. sharing that. It's really, really cool. Um, why, what is it that you think that, well, first of all, I really want to get into like, what took you so long? Cause I know now you're singing. <laughs> And you have a new album coming out. And I know that you're a little shy about it, right? Um, I am. I mean, the album's actually already out. It came out uh, in September and it's called Give the Drummer Some. And I am singing quite a bit on this record. Um, I love singing. I love singers, you know, and I love melody, you know, as well as rhythm and, and harmony. But I, I just, I love melody. So I've always sung in the privacy of my own home, like many people do, you know, um, when I hear uh, songs that I like, records that I like, um, you know, my favorite bands, I sing the solos, you know, um, but it's not really something that I ever wanted to go into in terms of doing it very seriously or doing it a lot. Um, I did uh, a record and some tours um, tributing to Tony Williams lifetime and Tony sang a little bit, you know, so I sang a little bit, you know, doing that stuff. Um, and then I, I sang a song on, on a record called the power of peace, which is a, a Santana Isley, uh, brothers record. And, um, Narda Michael Walden heard that song and he was like, I got to produce you. And Carlos kept saying, Oh, you need to, you have to sing. You have to do that. And my mom kept saying, Cindy, honey, you should sing. And I was like, Oh mom, you're so cute. I love you too. <laughs> you know, that's my mom. I know she loves me, you know? Um, but you know, when I was hearing it from so many sources and then I was feeling it, you know, I thought this would be a, a really great thing to try to express another side, not only of myself, but of the music and of delivering messages to people. Do you think that it's something that like, how, how can you help other young women or anyone out there really unlock that sort of, you know, fear that we have to like, to try to sing or did you have to do that or did it just always come naturally? Was it I a fear? To, I don't know if it was a fear or if it was, you know, um, that you found your niche and you were in doing what you were doing it's definitely a shyness, you know, because I'm very comfortable behind the drums. This is like my spaceship, you know, I sit back there and, you know, it's like my armor, you know, and I'm protected in my own little world. I don't have to step out front. I don't have to walk around. I don't have to do any of that, you know, and I love it. I love being there. That's my heart and soul right there, you know. Um, and so singing, I noticed that when we were in the studio, just being in the studio and going up to a microphone, I was like, where are the drums? I, I feel naked. <laughs> you know, I was, it was very strange. Um, so it's something for me to get used to. I, I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm not used to it yet. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very shy to sing, you know, and one of those things that makes me shy to sing is that I have such a deep and great love and respect for people who are actually singers. You know, I, I, I love them, you know, because they're like the, the chanteurs, you know, they're delivering the, the beautiful messages and melodies, you know, so um, I've always been shy about it and I'm still shy about it. So, <laughs> and to someone else who's, who's trying to maybe break the mold of being shy about something, I think you just have to dive in. It's like getting ready to jump into a swimming pool and you know that the water is a little cooler than what you want, but the only way you're going to get used to it is if you jump in and start swimming, you know? So I think for, for people who might have some sort of um, 
block or you know uh, concern or shyness about doing a particular particular thing. If it's something that they want to do, you just have to dive in and do it. Yeah. I think that's great advice. That's great advice. Maybe for you, you could take that bass drum and make one of those one man band things that we, <laughs> and then- That's sit. not gonna happen. <laughs> I like you, John, a lot. I, I love you, my know. brother, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Remember those? Anyway, um, what have you learned about yourself during this crazy, crazy year that we have? What did you learn about yourself as an artist? Or as a person? Um, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, I learned that that I can do more than I thought I could do, you know, because I've had to do more. I had to um, uh, film video. I had to learn how to, you know, um, go in and edit sections and say, well, I want this here and that there of the video. And how about let's try this? Of course, we had a, a great video editor when we did our videos in John Howe, you know, so my work was was easy because he's so great. But I had to, to hone in and do that. You know, um, I've had to delve into recording uh, my own vocals, you know, and I'm like, okay, I've got to be my own uh, tech, you know, my own roadie, my, <laughs> my own tech, you know, I've got to be the singer. Okay, let's, let's, let's figure this out. You know, so I, I've had to learn how to do that and really delve more into like using Pro Tools, which is something I'm happy to let somebody else do because I love to just focus on playing, you know, but in this period, I've had to, to delve into that. I, I even assisted uh, Carlos in, in recording his guitar, you know, which was another uh, lesson to learn, you know, because he's got such a great sound. So I learned what he likes to do with the mics and where they go. I never paid attention to that really. You know, so now I, I, I know how to do that. Um, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's really brought some things out of me and, and I have more in my vocabulary now as a result of this, you know, there's more into my belt. So it's actually, you know, there's some things and many things that have been very good about this kind of enclosure period that we've had. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, th <laughs> I think we all rose to an occasion and, and found new voices within ourselves and knew, you know, made the experience the best we could, I suppose. Right. But um, are you, is there anything that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of artists, of course, have been talking about the missing, you know, touring and, and um, what are your plans? What's your silver lining, you know, this year coming up? Do you have anything else that you're excited about that you're feeling like, you know, I'm going to do this now because I feel like I, I, I gained so much this year. I'm going to do something different or. Um, I don't know how different it's going to be um, in terms of scheduling, because I want to get back to touring and playing live and presenting, you know, uh, some of the songs on on my record, also touring with with the Santana Band, we're we're looking to do that and um, getting used to singing in front of crowds. You know, singing in front of people. Um, that's going to be a, a a good one for me. You know, it'll be a lovely challenge. Um, but also, you know, I think being able to um, bring um, a sense of um, what's the word, I guess hope or good feeling um, or a sense of knowing to, to people, you know, that it's all gonna be okay, you know, um, everything will be okay. Um, music does that, you know, I noticed that, you know, when, when you play a concert, not only do you feel better, but the people who are in the audience feel better. The people who are listening feel better. So it'll be great to get back to being able to put out that kind of energy again. You know, I really look forward to doing that. Um, that's going to be a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm writing some new music and I wanted to record some more music um, from, you know, some different, different concepts, you know, something similar to what I just put out, uh, give the drummer some, but then there's some creative stuff that, that I, that I want to do with, with, with uh, my, my, uh, my band, you know? Um, so there's that kind of thing, you know, there's um, Carlos's new record is coming out. Um, it's some other projects, you know, some collaboration um, with some 
other great people who I will not mention yet, but we will hey. mention the, I'm very excited and we'll mention that later. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to doing those kinds of things for sure. Well, the world is looking forward to having you back out there again too, that's for sure. Because, you know, we, I think we all miss music live. I certainly do. I certainly, the yeah. small part that I play in it, you know, being backstage and, and being there is, is such a celebratory moment. I just, I, I would like you to also maybe just close out um, just a little bit more on, uh, you know, being a, a young female musician out there, if you have any advice for anybody, or again, you know, you did say dive into the pool, but in particular, do you think now, um, maybe especially for young women of color too, who maybe want to pick up an instrument that might not be their thing, or how do people, how do people, explore and how do they, how do they, what am I trying to say here? I get a little mixed up and excited. How, how can they find themselves in music, working in music? Because it is such a great field. How do you navigate your way? Um, in terms of you yourself, finding yourself, you, you have to be honest and you have to give the music honesty. You have to give the music love. You know, you have to appreciate the music and hold the music with reverence in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, you know. And, you know, when you play it, uh, uh, treat it as such. Um, to me, that's, that's, that's a big one. Um, in terms of uh, the business or, or logistics, um, you know, I learned very early on, again, to never let anyone else define who or what I want to be or am going to be, you know? So if there's a young woman out there who wants to play and, and she's being detoured from that, you know, from whoever, I don't care who it is, your cat or your dog or your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or, or your girlfriend or your, your buddy or your whatever, you know, um, if you have your sights set on wanting to play the music, then do that regardless of, of who says anything contrary, because you have to follow your own heart. You know, think about um, what your soul arrived here with. Did you arrive with those people yakking in your ear telling you not to play? No, you didn't. You know, so they need, need to step back a little bit, you know, and, and slow their roll. And you need to just step up and say, you know what? This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. You know, I, I had a friend, um, her name was Sue, and I was about to move to New York. And I said, <laughs> well, how do you feel about walking around New York, uh, you know, like by yourself at night? You know, and she says, if I want to go somewhere, I just go somewhere. I'm like, yeah, girl, <laughs> I like it, you know? So you have to take the fear away. Of course, you have to be cautious and you have to be careful and you can't be stupid. You know, you don't want to walk into you know, um, uh, a lion's den and expect to not get scratched at least, you know, um, that would not be smart. Um, if you see a lion's den, you're gonna walk around it, but it doesn't mean you can't walk, you know? So I think if you wanna do something, go ahead and do it and put all your heart and soul into it, all your love into it. And I guarantee you, when you do that, you're gonna get good results back, even if the results are just within yourself because you are gonna feel good. And once you feel good, <laughs> everybody else is going to feel that eventually too. It's a formula that worked for you. So I would say that's great advice. <laughs> this is Absolutely. really a pleasure. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. I just, you know, I mean, lucky for you, you have that incredible instrument because obviously you avoided the COVID-10 that everyone else got because <laughs> you look <laughs> really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I, I, again, I, I think if we, we keep our immune systems boosted up and we get proper rest, we drink enough water, you know, we eat healthy food um, and we, we think healthy thoughts and we, we do healthy deeds, um, I, I, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. And I'm no doctor. I'm, this is a disclaimer. But for me, that's what works. <laughs> I think that's really great advice. I, th I agree with you. I can't help but know in my heart that there's better. That's it. Yeah, that's right. I so, love it. Let's go get it. All right, congratulations yeah. and uh, enjoy the award show. And uh, it was such an honor meeting you and speaking with you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. And my award is in the other room on a on a on a mantle, but it's so beautiful. I think she rocks. It's gorgeous. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you.